What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what we are doing is we are back on the AAF content, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking picks. We're talking week five. We're talking about who we're going with, who's going to pull up the upset, or who's going to continue its reign of dominance. Now, before I get into that, something I want to talk about, it's something deep from the heart that I want to talk to all my subscribers about, and that is... One of my best friends, right? One of my best friends, Layton. That's what, that's what we'll call him. We're not going to say his last name, you know, privacy purposes. Lage, you can even call him, Layton Lage. He refuses to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we've been friends since about the sixth grade, me and Lage have. And, you know, not only have we been best friends since the sixth grade, but I've had him on the channel before. He's done picks on the channel. But he's still sitting here and is not subscribed. Because he doesn't want to make a YouTube channel. All the other people in the crew, they're subscribed, Lage. Why aren't you subscribed? Everybody, you know, you can comment your picks if you want. But I want most of the comments section to be hashtag make Lage subscribe to Treeb. And that'll make my day. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado... Top in the video. One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so these March 9th through 10th games, I will not be watching a lot of them. I might be watching some of the games on the 10th, but that is when your boy is going on his little mini vacation. So, probably won't be able to watch some of these games. I'm going to have to watch the replay to get the 100% uh, accurate truth on what went down in those games. So, starting things off, we got Orlando and Beham, which I believe did get rescheduled, by the way, on TNT. It says it's... Uh, it says at 2 p.m. Eastern on Bleacher Report Live, but I'm about 100% sure that game got rescheduled to 7 o'clock on TNT, I'm pretty sure. So, Orlando and Birmingham. Beham just suffered its first loss ever to the San Antonio Commanders last week, and now the Orlando Apollos is their next challenge. Now, defensively, this is going to be the best defensive test the Apollos have had all season. Offensively, this is going to be the biggest offensive threat that the Iron have faced all season long. Both of these teams are two completely different sides of the coin. One is ran by pure offensive power. The other one ran by pure defensive power. But the thing is about the Apollos is they combine their offense and their defense to be really, really successful. Not only is their offense really good, but their defense can step up as well. They're really the whole put-together team. And in my opinion, the B the Beham offense is significantly overrated yeah you got Trent Richardson who leads the league in rushing touchdowns with six but he also I believe is last in yards per carry out of any starting running back so you know sure he's getting the goal line got a lot of touchdowns but like I said that's only going to do you good in fantasy points this guy's not going to drive you down the field also their quarterback Luis Perez might be the most overrated the most overrated player in the whole alliance a hundred percent there he Came into the league and everybody was like, oh, this guy has such a good story. He's the best quarterback in the league. Oh, my God, Luis Perez. That guy still has not thrown a touchdown yet. There's been four games, four weeks. Still has not thrown a touchdown. Luis Perez has it. Isn't that wild? That is wild. <laughs> you know, he just he hasn't done it because fucking Trent Richardson has gotten all the rushing touchdowns. So Luis Perez has not been able to throw a touchdown this season. And I think Garrett Gilbert's going to continue to show why he is his league's MVP and why he's the best quarterback in this league as well and just go out there and beat the iron. I think the Apollos continue their undefeated streak and really solidify themselves as the team to beat in the Alliance by going 5-0 and and beating the Beham Iron because that that's going to be their toughest matchup all season long. But for the Apollos, I think they get the job done. The glare of the old throat, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, the Salt Lake Stallions against the San Diego Fleet. Now, this is a game that at first could have gone either way. 
But now that Phil Nelson is out for four to six weeks, um, <clears throat> and Burke Avicii is going to be the fleet quarterback, I think the Stallions have a chance to win their second game of the season. The Stallions always win the games that are either ruffled by injuries or games that they that, that they should win. You know what I mean? That they should win. And this is a game against the uh, fleet on the road that they should win. Hopefully, uh, Woodrum has a better game. You know, he's not more of a game manager this time around. He actually goes out and tries to win the game. But it all comes down to Dennis Erickson, what kind of play calling he's going to do. It's probably going to be the same thing that he's done every single week thus far. Just pound the rock with Brandon Oliver, uh, Bogannon, you know, even Matt ought to get in the mix just a little bit. You know, part of this Salt Lake team is their run game is everything that they want to, you know, be successful at. That's the thing that they uh, – they want to be successful at the most in the run game. And that's what they need to establish against the fleet. But if it's a close game, Woodrum's also going to have to make those passes down the field necessary to win the game. And in a game where he is probably better than Bergovici, you know, he wins the QB battle in this matchup. So hopefully, hopefully I say, Woodrum could come out for the Salt Lake Stallions team and beat a team that they're supposed to beat with a backup quarterback in the San Diego fleet. If not... They will remain at number eight on my power rankings. I know a lot of people, a lot of people didn't agree with that. And I understand that. I completely do. But, you know, everybody talks about how the Stallions are like the best, one of the best teams in the league. But, I mean, have they really done anything to show that? Or is that just kind of like you just saying that? Like, like you're just claiming that. The Stallions are, I honestly believe the Stallions are one of the best teams in the league. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you think that? They fucking lost to the hot shots. And then they lost to the Iron. And then they beat the Hot Shots finally. And then lost to the Apollos. You know, like, they, they've they just fallen. Like, you want to talk about how this team might be good or could be good? Who cares? Even if they might be good and they somehow itch their way into the playoffs, they're losing. Like, 100% of the time. Because they're probably, pound for pound, like, the fifth or sixth best team in the league. And to make it to the playoffs, you have to be, like, top four. You know, the two best in the East, two best in the West. Meet in the playoffs, winner goes to the championship. And even if the Stallions manage to do that, they lose. They lose in the West Finals every time. Like, this is just, they're not built to beat anybody. And I don't think that, you know, I'm basically shitting on the Stallions right now. I don't think that they are as good as everybody makes them out to be, but I think they will be good enough to beat the Fleet without Philip Nelson and with Berkovici. Coming up next, the Memphis Express against the Atlanta Legends. I had a guy comment on my video uh, last week going over the uh, the power rankings this week, uh, and they said Memphis and Atlanta, actually a game worth watching. Who would have thought? That's what I'm thinking. Who would have thought a game worth watching? Aaron Murray against Zach Mettenberger, two of the guys that were clamored to get in there and really wanted uh, – those fan bases really wanted those guys to play, and now they get an opportunity to watch them play against each other. The two one-win teams, one team's going to walk away with its second win, one team's going to walk away with its first win. I'm going to tell you right now, the Memphis Express are going to be the team that walks away with that victory. Memphis was in it the whole entire game in their game last week against the fleet and they won they ended up winning for atlanta and arizona that game was slop that game was slop from beginning to end you know they were in the red zone wouldn't score they punt you know back and back and forth i don't buy into the atlanta coaching staff at all and i think that you know one win might be enough <laughs> one win might be enough for this atlanta legends team I think that uh, Memphis is going to come in on the road against Atlanta and uh, be able to go there and take care of business. Zach Mettenberger finally gets a professional – I mean, well, he finally got a professional win last week, but he gets a second professional win the week after. So they're going to take Atlanta down, and it's going to be on the road, and I'm excited to see what Zach Mettenberger could do because I've been clamoring for this guy ever since this league started, and everybody was calling me an idiot, saying, Zach Mettenberger's trash, blah, 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 blah. Look at me now. <laughs> Look at me now. Zach Mettenberger, one of the most exciting uh, you know, prospects right now in the AAF to see how well he's going to do, at least. Not necessarily like an NFL prospect, but exciting enough to see where he's going to go next. And then the main event of the evening, the San Antonio Commanders and the Arizona Hot Shots. Now, these games are so hard to pick because like all the matchups are so evenly 
evenly distributed this week. I mean, the st- the like, legends, the legends in the Express game, you could not have picked a harder game to pick, especially teams that are both coming off of wins. You know, maybe if one team was coming off a win and the other one wasn't, it'd be easier to pick. But, you know, with both of them coming off a win, you know, it's hard. And then you got the Commanders against the Hot Shots, and the Hot Shots are coming off of two hard losses last week, the last two weeks. So they're taking on a Commanders team who's hot, who just gave the Beham iron their first loss of the season. And I think San Antonio extends Arizona's losing streak to three. You know, I've told uh, some people, I don't know if I've announced it on the channel, but, you know, I started off as a Salt Lake fan this year, and I've been kind of gradually fading away. And, you know, I really like the Commanders, so that's the team I'm rolling with. So, San Antonio, let's go get the job done. Let's go beat Arizona, and let's make sure that we get the job done. I like everything San Antonio has to offer from quarterback to wide receiver play, everything. Wolford does have to step up, though, in order for the commanders to be successful in this one. Or not Wolford, sorry. My bad, Woodside. Woodside's going to have to compete. But Wolford, on the on the other hand, you know, for the hot shots, he's going to have to perform as well to uh, get them a victory. But I'm going to take the San Antonio commanders, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you have picks, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you get them in before the games if you want them to count in the contest. Also, I keep on forgetting to announce this, but I pin up the funniest comment. If you make me laugh, then you get your comment pinned. Just a heads up. So, those were the picks, ladies and gentlemen.